Are you tired of working a 9 to 5 job and not getting paid enough? In this video, we will explain these side hustles. Hey guys, Austin here. I am actually going to try something brand new. Um, I saw a video by Marcus Campbell where a guy did very well for himself where he simply reacted to videos and that got me to thinking and that got me inspired to do to try reaction videos now you guys like the i tried it series and if this is something that you're interested in we are going to add in a new series to this channel called reaction so what we're going to do is we're simply going to react to this video i'm going to pause it uh, and just give you my thoughts on the five side hustles to start in 2023 my name is austin godbolt with austingodbolt.com i create content to actually help you make money online and not just to put money into my own pockets and if you want to be added to this globe simply reply or comment down below with your city, state, province, country, and I'll get you pinned. So as I mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to simply just react to this video and I'm going to input my thoughts where I feel necessary. I'm going to tell you if it's good, it's bad, if this makes sense or if it doesn't. Before we get going, can we give credit to this YouTube channel? This YouTube channel only has less than 2,000 subscribers, but this video has over 100,000 views. So this should be proof positive that anybody can get started on YouTube. Also, question for you. Do you think this is an AI channel? So an AI person did all of this, or do you think this is a YouTube automation channel where uh, the, the content creator hired a team of people. I'll tell you my thoughts at the end of this video, but let me know in the comment section what you think. Is this an AI channel where they've got um, a, a fake voiceover, they just went over to a website like Pictory and had all of this put together, or do you think this is a YouTube automation channel? I'll tell you what I think. Hustles that can make you a serious amount of money that could potentially replace your income. It can even lead you to quit your job. Take a holiday in Italy you always wanted. I wonder why he picked Italy. Now, usually um, with, with these videos, oftentimes they are spun content from someone else's transcript. And so if I found out that my video was spun and did 127,000 views, I would be, I'd be frustrated with myself, but you know, it is what it is in the world of, of YouTube. Or have the free time to spend with your loved ones. Before we begin, please subscribe to our Oh, I should let you guys know, I have added a form in the bottom of, of my uh, links that if you want to add in a video that you want me to do a reaction to, or if you want me to try the side hustle, there's a form that you can actually input the YouTube channel and your name. It's just more streamlined, it's a more efficient thing, and I don't have to kind of like jump through hoops. But if you see a video out there that you want me to react to or you want me to try as far as the side hustle, input that video information in the form. It's a Google doc. I'm not even gonna like collect it. I'm not gonna try and mark it to you. Um, input that information and I'll actually give you a shout out at the beginning of the video. To our channel to support our videos. Let's start with the most obvious one, freelancing. So guys, what's gonna happen is, is these videos are probably gonna be like three hours long because I'm gonna stop it and I just simply like to talk about it. I had a guy jump on my live stream yesterday and say, um, he is dead broke. He's on the verge of homelessness. What should he do? I think that if you need cash today, if you need money today, you should start freelancing and not just any type of freelancing, whatever skill that you know how to do offline, you should be able to do the same thing online. So I, I definitely agree. Freelancing is a good side hustle to start. Uh, there are caps on it, but you know, let it, let's keep going. Freelancing is a form of business where you offer a service based on your skill and get paid for it in return. You would be surprised. Almost any skill can be used to freelance. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like I said, if you know how to do something, anything, people say, well, I have no skill. If you've made it to your age, you've acquired some sort of skill. Uh, you might not value it, but someone else else out there values it because uh, people buy things if you can save them time or you can save them money. And for example, data entry is quote unquote, a basic skill, but it saves a business owner time. Therefore, they're willing to give them their money. So to post, I think I just jumped ahead. This is the obviously my first uh, tried it series. So things aren't going to be as smooth as we'd like and be used to freelance. Do you know any other language than English? Translate documents, video games, videos and transcripts. So one thing that I really like is he's talking about freelancing, but you could start a YouTube channel just teaching people how to say different languages in different languages. So how to say hello in Spanish, that's a huge thing. Um, I have people from all around the world, as you can see on my, my globe here. Um, 
I don't know any language very well, but I could hire someone that does and that person could be you. So freelancing is huge. It's a huge opportunity out there if you're willing to take it. Are you familiar with Photoshop? Create logos, thumbnails, and banners for clients. You would be surprised by the number of people that send me an email every single day telling me that my thumbnails are terrible and they want to do me the honor of fixing my thumbnails. The emails all start the exact same. They say, hey, um, love your content, but your emails are your, but, but your thumbnails are trash. Um, I want to increase your thumbnails so that you can get more visibility so that you can be seen by the right people. And then I always wonder, how do they know that my email, my thumbnails are trash? A, they saw the, the video. B, my, uh, my, my C CTR, my click through rates usually about 10 to 14% depending on the video. So hate to break it to you. Basic thumbnails can work too. Do you know how to edit videos? Come work with us. Just joking. I get a lot of people ask me about um, editing my videos because my videos are trash too. So um, this is this must work and somebody must be teaching this because I get a lot of people reaching out to me every single day asking me to do this stuff. We already have an editor after you decide which service you can provide you will need a market where you can offer your services to the clients. There are two big websites for that, Upwork and Fiverr. In Upwork, clients post jobs to which freelancers like yourself can apply. So freelancing, and, and I'm gonna let this run, okay? I, I know that I've been stopping, stopping this a lot. On the internet, there are so many different ways to learn a skill. Let's say you wanted to become a master at YouTube ads. Go out, you can go to Google. Google's gonna train you on how to do it. You want to make sure that you test it and get some skills and some proof, and then you can go market that. Um, there are so many different certifications out there. There's so many different free courses, whether they're free courses on Udemy or you know Skillshare. Um, really, if you really want to learn a skill, if you want it bad enough, you'll figure out a way to do it, and then you'll figure out a way to get paid for it. If you apply to the jobs and the client considers your application worthy, you will get called for an interview. If you can convince the client to hire you, bam, you and I do recommend that you reach out to people via YouTube. Um, if they have an email address in their about section, that's how people find my email address. Send them an email. It, it doesn't hurt. Uh, this is a little bit of the spray and pray method, but it, it's a more direct way. It's a better way than waiting for people to come to you on Fiverr. At least you're being proactive and you're trying to go out and get the client instead of um, waiting for people to come to you. If you're aggressive, you go out and take the money, um, not take the money in a bad way, take the money in a good way, you can be successful online. You got your first freelancing job. Try your best. In Fiverr, the hiring process is the opposite of Upwork. Instead of applying to jobs posted by clients, you create your gig or service. You can specify how much you charge for different kinds of services, and the clients will bring you the work. Now, it helps that if you have a more specialized or technical skill over on Fiverr simply because I, it's really competitive. And I actually had a certification in AWS, Amazon Web Services, and that allowed me to get jobs more easily. People would come to me and ask me to do work. Um, but you wanna make sure that you are having, you have some sort of technical or specialized skill that'll increase the chances of you be, being hired or, or brought aboard. But make no mistake, getting your first order on Fiverr is very hard. But when you get your first client, it will create a snowballing effect where the orders keep coming. How I didn't find that. <laughs> I found that I, it went weeks before I actually got um, two clients. So I got a client, waited a week or two, and then tried it again, and, and I got a second client. But try and find uh, specialized technical skills that you can do. Also, pro tip, if you watch a video on how to make money on Fiverr, don't do that exact method because there are already going to be 100,000 people that are doing that exact method. Try and find a method that nobody's talking about, a new method. For example, when NFTs were big, go and create a, a gig over on Fiverr about doing NFTs and you would have been really successful. How amazing. Before going into the method, it would mean a lot to me if you drop a like and a comment. Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you guys dropped a like and a comment as well <laughs> on my video, but uh, so far, so good, good video. Um, very basic information, but People, if people want to make money online, they need basic information. They don't need high level stuff just yet. So, uh, so far, so good with this video. Waiting. Okay, into the next one. The method is called influencer marketing. In the world we live in, the only currency is gathering attention. If you can make people stop and pay attention to what you have to say, you can make a lot of money. Are you an extroverted person? So you don't have to be an extroverted person. I would consider myself incredibly 
uh, introverted, probably socially awkward. If you ever saw me at the grocery store, um, I look straight ahead. I don't really make eye contact with people because I don't want to have a conversation uh, with them. But anybody can be successful online because you're just looking into a camera. And for me, I feel like if your goals are uh, big enough, then you can overcome looking into a camera. Now, the downside of making content on the internet is you are open to any feedback or criticism that people have. And because there's that barrier, people can't actually see you and um, uh, confront you or you can't confront them person to person. They are able to be the worst versions of themselves at times. And people also are the best versions, but there's kind of like that no in between. People are either very good on the internet. Most of the people here on my YouTube channel are, are very good. Um, but you know, over on, on TikTok, when I go live, it's it's a lot of very bad or, or subpar. Do you have enough time to deal with social media apps like TikTok or Instagram? If you say yes to all of them, this method is perfect, but first, you have to choose your niche. It can be about almost anything. But as a wise guy once said, always go for the profitable niches. So guys, if you know me, you know that I believe that any niche can work. If it's being bought and sold online, you can be successful with it. So uh, while they're gonna pick some, some expensive niches that are really competitive, I think that if you have a passion about, I don't know, some obscure niche, there are probably at least a million people that also have that same passion or interest and you can be successful online. The first niche that we recommend is fashion. You can post content about outfits, sneakers, or jewelry. So what I would recommend, if, if you're gonna get into fashion, and again, I keep stopping this, but um, if you're getting, going to get into fashion, I think you should niche down. People say don't niche down, but you have to remember there are 4 billion people in the world that have access to the internet and not everybody's gonna be interested in this person on the screen. There are going to be people that are interested in fashion over 50, uh, people that are interested in fashion in the workplace. I believe that if you target, you niche down and you create fashion for the workplace or you know new trending fashion, something like that, you could be incredibly successful and you could get in front of millions of people. In my opinion, it's always important to niche down, try and find a, a subsection because if you're talking to everybody, really you're not talking to anybody. If you can connect with your audience in this niche, you can make a lot of money. The monetization in this niche could be selling merch or promoting brands. But if you're serious about it, you can start your own clothing business. I wouldn't recommend your own clothing business in the very beginning. Very expensive to get up and running. Um, it takes a lot of time. What I would recommend is becoming an affiliate for something. He mentioned merch, uh, brand deal sponsorships. But starting off as an affiliate is a great way to get up and running fast, especially if you don't have a whole bunch of time. If you, let's say you work a nine to five and you want to get into the fashion niche, how much time would it actually take you to create a clothing brand? Think about that. That's a full-time job. You got to find suppliers. You got to pick colors. You got to pick um, like swatches and all that weird stuff that comes with fashion. I'm not a fashion guru by any stretch of the imagination, but think about all the time that it would take to launch a fashion boutique versus going out and partnering with someone that already has the stuff set up. You just recommend them and then uh, you can make money. Like Target, for example, you could be an affiliate for Target. Remember, it is easier to sell anything if you already have the right audience. The second niche we recommend is animals. If you have a friend with fur, your content can be about your pet. So what I would do here is I would actually niche down and talk about individual pet breeds. Again, um, and it's funny, people that have Doberman Pinschers, for example, are a very different breed of people, no pun intended, than people that have Shih Tzus or you know, a, a Fufu dog, or like a Poodle. And so if you can target, and those people don't really like interact or intermingle, if you can target individual brands or individual uh, pet niches or pet breeds, you can be much more successful. Um, I think that's the best way to go in 2023, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could be really general with who you target. Uh, you could say, hey, I create content for pets and then everybody would, would, would buy your stuff. But because there's more competition, you want to niche down and talk about individual prep pet breeds. I mean, who doesn't love a cat that is making biscuits, purring and being cute? Or who doesn't want to watch a I don't like cats. Dog being silly. First, gain your audience with your pet by consistently posting about it. And that's the key to being successful online is the consistency. Most people want to take days off, but in the very beginning, you want to post and upload every single day. 
you want to post and upload if you're on social media multiple times every single day. But once you start hitting the the levels that you want to achieve, that's when you can start looking at scaling back and pulling back. But in the very beginning, I'm a huge fan of uploading every single day so that you can build that following, you can build that momentum because, you know, uh, being successful online, making money online is all about momentum. Uh, if you have momentum, you feel like money is literally falling out of the sky. If you lose that momentum, it feels like it feels like the well is dried up and it feels impossible to get it back. So in the beginning, it's all about momentum. As we said earlier, you can sell anything to the right audience. The monetization in this niche could be promoting pet toys, automatic feeders, water fountains, or anything related to pets. And remember, to gain traction in influencer marketing, you must grind and post consistently. Yeah, I agree. Post consistently, post daily, post multiple times per day, it will feel like a grind. Uh, one great thing that you can do is interact with the people that do interact with your content. That'll help you snowball a little bit quicker. Uh, that's something that I'm trying to get better with is interacting with people that interact with me that helps build a following. That ultimately will help uh, push your content out to more people. The people that follow and, and interact with you, they're more likely to share your content. And so, you know, it, it helps with the snowball and you'll be able to grow much, much faster. So to post consistently without burnout, you must choose a niche you are interested, what you are doing. That's huge. And again, I'm going to wind up. This is going to be a 20 hour video. Most people run toward the money. OK, I'm going to post in health, wealth, relationships or technology because that's where all the money is. But they get burnt out because they're not truly passionate in health, wealth, relationships or technology. They're passionate in, you know, their kids. They're passionate in homeschooling and, and regular things that, quote unquote, don't make money. But if people are buying stuff online, it makes money. And so don't feel like you have to run to health, wealth, relationships or technology because you're going to get burnt out. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be broke. That actually not broke, but that actually happened to me with sound bars. I ran to one of my blogs was in sound bars and I saw that nobody was writing content in sound bars. And so I ran to that niche because it was open. I wrote 10 blog posts and I was burnt out. I was completely tired of it. I hated hated writing about sound bars. And so I just stopped. It still gets a lot of traffic. I still earn affiliate commissions from that that blog, but it it's, you know, the well is kind of dried up there. Is essentially creating your brand. So be careful with it. Now we are done with influencer marketing. Let's jump into the next method, starting a YouTube channel. Why you might ask? Because in the last 10 years, YouTube replaced the TV. For example, what was the last time you watched TV? I watched TV yesterday. Um, I watch live TV still dominates, or live sports, I should say, still dominates. But for the most part, you know, they're they're semi right. But when it comes to professional sports, you have to watch it live, or else everybody's already talking about it on on the internet. So um, I watched TV yesterday. Was it a long time ago? Me too. Now let's plan your YouTube career to start your YouTube channel you should pick a niche like influencer marketing. There are profitable and not so profitable. So once again, every niche can work. And first you should identify your goals of your YouTube channel. Don't pick a niche first, identify the goals. If your goal is to make money, which ultimately it should be if you're looking to start a side hustle, think about the monetization avenues that you could uh, venture down, okay? So picking a niche is great. But if your plan is to monetize, I would say, okay, um, I want to monetize my channel. Now let's pick a niche and let's figure out all of the different monetization strategies. I want to make 10K per month with my YouTube channel. And I need to know that I, I want to do a mix of affiliate marketing and the YouTube partner program and selling merchandise and all that stuff. I think that's almost more important than just picking a, a niche and going from there. And again, any niche can work. Uh, if you're into knitting, if you're into whatever. Uh, there's a thousand people out there that are interested in well as well. And you really only need a thousand to maybe 5,000 people to be really successful online, especially if you're selling a hundred dollar product. Um, what's a, what's a thousand times what's, what's 5,000 times a hundred. Um, we'll do the math real quick. Cause as you guys know, from my channel, I am not a math guy. So if you had a thousand people and they each sold, bought $500 worth of stuff from you, that's $50,000. And so, or $500,000, even with the calculator, not so great with math, that's $500,000. So you don't need this huge mega channel. 
You just need to focus on a target audience and create content for them. Aim for 5,000 people. That's all you got to aim for. Profitable niches. Finance, investing, health, and fitness are the most profitable niches. If you choose one of them, YouTube will pay you between four and $50 per 1,000 views. So those four niches, it's like a dog fight to get into. It's very difficult and you have to come in with a brand new angle or a slightly different angle. Uh, a reaction video might work. Um, I tried it series is doing well for me. Come in with a different angle because just creating the same content as everybody else, you're gonna run into a big brick wall and you're gonna be frustrated because you're gonna create 200 videos and get 50 views especially if this is your first venture into creating content. So I, I recommend come in with a completely different point of view. If everyone's telling you to go left in investing, tell, create videos why they're all wrong or you know the truth behind why going left is not for you. How amazing, isn't it? Another advantage of these niches is they are far less competitive. And you know, a couple examples of that is Spencer, Cornelia, and Coffeezilla. They basically call everybody that has an influence online, they call them all um, fake gurus. And so in the last 10 years, five to 10 years, we've seen this movement where everyone is teaching a skill that they learned and Coffeezilla and Spencer, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and Spencer Cornelia, they did the opposite. They said, okay, all of these guys that are telling you they have these gold chains on Instagram, they're telling you that they're winning all of these bets. That's not actually the case. They're making money and the money that they're showing you that they're making comes from you, the customer, and not from winning the bets. So you don't have to be perfect to catch some eyes. On the other hand, gaming, vlogging, and meditation niches are the least profitable niches. Also, they are the most competitive niches. So you need a larger audience to make money. If you're going to get into the gaming niche, and that's one thing that I would love to do, I would focus on one game, and then I would focus on individual subsections of that game. For example, uh, I used to play a game called, um, it was called The Division. And The Division had different bosses you had to beat. So I would, if I were to get into the gaming space, I would create videos on how to defeat the Bullet King, for example, in 30 seconds and, and do speed runs and time runs and things of that nature for individual sections of the game because people are going to come to the internet because they need help defeating the Bullet King and, and you can be that support for them and then they'll, they'll follow you along. However, all hope is not lost to gain a larger and more loyal audience you can add something to the game that nobody else has, which is building a connection with the audience. You can connect with your audience by getting good at telling stories. Also guys, what do you think about the lights behind me? I just added them. Uh, this is rain blue. It's something new that I'm trying. If it's not dark enough, let me, it's not light enough, let me know. But you know, I wanted to add a little pizzazz to these videos, uh, cause I think it looked cool. I saw these on, on TikTok, by the way. People love to hear good stories also you can show some personality in your videos to stand out from the crowd after picking your niche. That was a weird um, stock photo. So in these videos, and in my opinion, uh, this is probably a YouTube automation channel, they grab stock videos, stock photos from a website like Pexels and Unsplash and Pixelbay. I recommend if you're gonna do YouTube automation, go to use Storyblocks. Uh, Storyblocks is a paid uh, paid service. I'm not sponsored by Storyblocks in any way, but using Storyblocks, a paid version, makes you stand out versus all of these other videos that use the exact same stock photos. If you use Storyblocks, you're going to set yourself apart from many other people. You're going to create more unique content, and YouTube favors unique content. You need to invest some money in a good quality microphone. Nobody likes to hear buzzy sounds from a broken microphone. After recording your videos, you need to edit them. We recommend you edit your videos by yourself in the beginning. After you make some money with the videos, you can hire a video editor to make your videos perfect. I should hire a video editor. That's one of the emails that I get all the time I had that my videos aren't engaging enough. Um, I should hire a video editor. That's something to think about. And remember, consistency is key anywhere in life. And being a... That's why most people fail with, with YouTube and with affiliate marketing and anything in general. They upload five pieces of content and then they expect money to come raining down on them, fall from the sky. 
when in reality, it takes consistency over a decent period of time to start seeing measurable results. And measure, measurable results should be your first view, your first comment, your first like, your first dislike. Um, those are measurable results. Expecting to create 10 YouTube videos and money to just happen is unrealistic and it's unfair to you. So make sure that you have real measurable results my first view, my first subscriber, my first 10 subscribers, my first email opt-in, make sure that you have those and uh, and you'll be much more successful and it'll give you the motivation to keep going. A YouTuber is not an exception. You need to put in some money and effort to succeed. You can start YouTube for free with what, what you have. You don't absolutely need to spend money. Your, your camera's audio and video is good enough in the beginning. I don't want you to spend money that you don't have. But when you make it once, you can change your life forever. That's it for today, folks. All right, so that's about it. Again, credit to this video for having 1.56 thousand subscribers, but this video has over 156,000 views in just six days. That's incredible. Now, now that you know the five side hustles, uh, go ahead and click the first link in the description and get free affiliate marketing planners. Those planners are going to help you plan and organize your affiliate marketing business so that you can make more money online. Click the first link in the description or go to alstongodbolt.com forward slash start for those free planners. Watch this video next because YouTube says it's going to help you grow your online business.